Hi again guys and welcome to another tune setup specifically for straight line performance on Forza Horizon 3 and there might be a slight sound of a hedge strimmer in the background because of inconsiderate neighbours who don't appreciate the importance of YouTube and tuning but hey these things happen, the show must go on. So this car is, of course, a Mustang, the Ford Mustang SVT Cobra R. Personally, I've always liked this Mustang. I'm not a huge fan, fan even, of Mustangs in general. This one, though, has always appealed to me. I like the more simplistic, boxy style that it has, and it's always a very, very good performance car in the world of Forza especially when it comes to drag racing. Now I've gone for the V12 engine swap. I know a lot of people don't like that. These are speed tunes, so if you don't want speed, don't fit the V12. It's pretty simple. Now as far as the drivetrain, we've got all-wheel drive, which again is the best way to get that power down. If you want to try and give it a go with rear-wheel drive, with the 1500 horsepower, for a bit more fun and a bit more of a challenge, then by all means go for that. As far as aspiration, we've got the twin turbo fitted. For the visuals, of course, I have removed the rear wing, but that's down to you. You don't have to do that. As you can also see, of course, we do have a roll cage. I would recommend that on this one because it does improve your acceleration in particular, and pretty much for any muscle car, I would recommend that. This tune is incidentally on my storefront. You can use the keywords down in the description to find it. And as you can see from the benchmark, the acceleration in particular in, in particular, actually, even again, the 0 to 100 is very strong on this car. 1.7 to 60 is good, but 3.5 to 100 is very impressive. 270 flat out isn't exactly a slouch either. It's not the fastest of muscle cars, but it's pretty close. It is pretty close to it, especially as far as modern ones go. As far as the gearbox, I'd recommend a final drive of 3 then very familiar individual ratios of 2.9, 2, 1.5, 2, 1.18, 0.95 and 0.79. For the alignment, of course, we have neutral camber and toe, as usual. I've gone for three degrees of caster. That suits me pretty well, but of course you could change that if you want to. Anti-roll, I've just rounded off to 34 and 20. Springs on 194, 180, and I've opted for the lowest ride height on the front and the back. Dampers, we've got on 15, 13, 7 and 6. Aero, of course, doesn't apply. And finally, for the diff, I've got 100%, as we more often than not do, for acceleration, 0 on D-cell. But, of course, you can change these things around if you want to. 70% center split for the all-wheel drive, and again, if you want it to be more tail-happy, because it definitely can be in the case of this car, then you might want to bump it up to 75 or 80, but of course that can detrimentally affect your launch off the line. I find that 70% for a car like this is a pretty good split to have, anywhere around there. So that's it for the tune, as I said, it is on the storefront, but all that remains is, as usual, to prove on the road what this car is actually capable of. If you are looking for a very strong modern take on a muscle car, in particular though from the earlier 2000s or late 90s kind of era, then this one is a very strong one to go for. It might even be the best one overall. The handling is very good. It's kind of a sleeper, but a cool car at the same time. Top speed is good. You can go a little bit above the benchmark to about 271-ish downhill, probably again with draft also, and the acceleration is ballistically fast. So if you do decide to use this car, and of course this tune or some variation of it, I hope you have a whole lot of fun with it, and of course you can find hundreds more by clicking through to see those at the end of this video. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.